30 May, 2022. Thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel. Additionally, like my official YouTube videos and share the links to my official YouTube videos. If you're gonna leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. And go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com. It's the same as www.ladydorybell.com, as it always has been, especially since I created my name, Lady Dory Bell. So, today is Memorial Day, the 30th of May, 2022. And so, I had listened to a Denzel Washington motivational video as to a speech that he had given in reference to a few things. And after having seen, though not read, a particular Google news article about what Navy SEALs want people to remember in regards of Memorial Day, this particular official YouTube video of mine is in that reference in a different capacity because of course it's my way. So yes, my outfit being red, white, and blue, I'm wearing two different corsets. Yes, they are the thick spiral steel boning as to eight millimeters and well, technically because of the six millimeter twice, it's 12 millimeter boning as to each of the areas because of how boning actually works in corsetry. And so technically it would be eight millimeters plus 12 millimeters for the eight pieces as to the spiral steel boning with the 10 millimeter twice regarding the front part of my corset as well as the back part of my corset. So there is a reference to that that I'll get to when I get to it in my official YouTube video. So with the fact that today is Memorial Day and the amount of soldiers and the overall aspect of the armed forces of the United States of America, the facts are as to what I'll bring forward. However, without further ado, oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight motivational speech and it had discussed when he was speaking in this particular official reference to the YouTube video to some college students and 
He, at the original point of my personal memory as to Denzel Washington, would be in reference to how he had assisted regarding a San Antonio New Express News article about how the Warrior Transition Unit was being put in at Fort Sam Houston. And that area as to the Warrior Transition Unit used to be known as Medical Hold Unit. I had been in Medical Hold Unit before it was Warrior Transition Unit because I had a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. And when I was in basic training, despite being 17 years old, because of having fought to be in the Army, due to the situations I was in, but also because I knew it was necessary. The irony is in this speech, he had discussed certain aspects of a female being prophetic and speaking with him many years before. So in this particular reference, when I was in medical hold unit, I had explained to some of the guys that I had a nightmare when I was a child and I was doing what I could to be capable to assist in reference to making it better in comparison to as bad as what I had seen. And so I had been capable to utilize what would be considered as, as visions to a degree to better certain situations in comparison to the level that I have seen it because of certain aspects. I have called it quantum healing in certain references, but because of the various categories, categories of different types of quantum energetic portions, it depends on how you view it. So the aspects as to quantum healing can be in a multitude of ways. So in reference to Denzel Washington as to what he had done in the assistance to Warrior Transition Unit, the changes over the years from what used to be medical hold unit to warrior transition unit tie into this particular Google News article that I had seen, though acknowledged that I didn't read the aspects of because I knew what it was inspiring me in this particular reference for my official YouTube video. So in this particular reference, there is the starting point as to the year of 2005, which is one year before the San Antonio Express News article regarding Denzel Washington and the Warrior Transition Unit for that clarification that some people might not have known. And so in this particular situation in the year of 2005, that was before the time frame as to the Warrior Transition Unit opening at Fort Sam Houston, which is in San Antonio, Texas. And it's now, instead of just one base, it's called Joint Base San Antonio in comparison. And San Antonio is also known as Military City USA now. And that's in the state of Texas, who didn't know. So again, my outfit, if you know anything about lower levels of scuba diving, as to the depth levels, well, my blue regarding my corsetry has to do with that, although I didn't think I'd actually have to explain that, though I'll get to it. So in the year 2005, one afternoon, my biological father came over to my house in San Antonio, despite it being during the time frame of the first separation to my children's biological father, who is my dead ex-husband. We didn't get the legal divorce before he died. I was in a different part of the city and I hadn't seen him in two days. So there were the situations that I have acknowledged, which in addition, those issues regarding the uniform problem as to the rack, I've also detailed in prior journal blogs of mine, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. I also detailed it in reference to one of my first few books, Finding a Silver Lining, which you can find the link in my book section on my website, www.susanmeeling.com. In addition to that, I've discussed these situations 
for years in person, face to face in person, mainly during the time frame of 2008 regarding the RAC in 2008 through the time frame of 2013. So I've discussed quite a few other situations in person, face to face in person throughout the years and decades, though it depends on who you speak with as well as what discussions occurred during those time frames in comparison to my official YouTube videos, which are not discussions, they're lectures or sermons or monologues, however you view that in comparison, because a discussion requires a back and forth in person, face to face in person, or if you're making a phone call, I suppose you can consider that a discussion if there's actual dialogue between the individuals on the phone call in comparison to what some people might think, especially with the more common usage as to technology. And so in that particular reference as to the time frame of the year of 2005, my biological father asked what I was going to go and do. And I said, well, this weekend I was asked to be a lap bunny, which I got yelled at for because apparently he had been to Las Vegas and I didn't know where Las Vegas was at the time. I was in the state of Texas. I was born and raised in New Jersey and grew up going around the tri-state area. So I didn't know anything about Las Vegas. I didn't even know Las Vegas as a name let alone where it is. And so when I later in the year 2021, I didn't see anything that was in reference to what I had heard about, though it is what it is. So in this particular reference, my biological father had been very angry to find out that I had been asked to be a lap bunny, which again, I don't think I actually did because that would require something that I don't understand. I thought it was just something where, you know, you'd have the food and stuff like that and just sit around talking. I, the only poker reference I knew at the time had to do with my fireplace and the tools of, in comparison. And so I suppose in certain references to an irony as to the eight or nine other people that were there, well, then there's that. Those people were associated with individuals as to the Chase Bank off of I-90 near 410, for those who know where Lackland Air Force Base is. And so in that particular reference of the year 2005, it wasn't very long after the Excalibur Fair, which the Excalibur Fair in those particular references, that would be the female dawn as far as how that situation had been, which I've discussed as well as put in writing, and additionally made official YouTube videos of mine in those particular references, which while there are those particular additional factors to take in consideration, you know, I stopped speaking with Dawn in the year of 2005 on my own, through my own choice, for my own reasons. So, in those regards as to any hypothetical, this is also why those Ten Commandments are so very important as to honesty and integrity in comparison, because false representation would be the equivalent of bearing false witness. Obviously, that'd be common sense. So, in that particular reference regarding the poker game, my biological father started yelling, was very upset, went on and on and on. No daughter of mine's gonna be a lap bunny. I don't even know what a lap bunny is. I'm thinking, you know, oh, well, you know, I have dogs and you know, I can get out. It, 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 it doesn't register at all regarding what, and I, to this day, I still don't know what a lap bunny is just for clarifications. So he got upset and it was, you know, with your luck, you'll get a royal flush and you'll do that stupid happy fairy dance. And it's one of those, excuse me, fairies are not stupid. And what's wrong with my happy fairy dance? Nonetheless, you know, and so for those who, when I get happy and excited, it's a, I get all whatever. And so in comparison to, you know, anyway, so I had, um, made my defense in regards of, well, I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna sit there and talk with people I don't understand 
what the reference is, is what you're thinking of. What is it that you're thinking of regarding Las Vegas and lap bunnies? I have no idea what that has to do with. That makes absolutely no sense to me to this day in the year 2022. There hasn't been anybody who explained to me what a lap bunny is, by the way. And so there is that. <laughs> Nonetheless, it is what it is. So I go to the game and the guy who is next to me, he had two quarters left or nickels, dimes, whatever it was. And he said he was down to the last, whatever, in comparison to whatever he started with. I have no understanding as to what the references are. I don't even know what is going on at that point, to be honest, because I didn't even know there were gonna be cards involved. So we were in the state of Texas, and so I figured the reason why it was called Texas Hold'em was because you held cards and we were in the state of Texas. That was my reasoning because it made sense to me. I don't know if Texas Hold'em is played anywhere else. I don't know anything about this particular aspect and I don't deny that either. And so it was one of those, okay, well, there are five cards on the table and everybody has two cards. Okay, hmm. yeah, whatever. And so I got told, you know, I could play. And I was like, all right, fine, whatever, okay. And so the, the two cards go to me. Dawn on the other side of the table starts laughing and she's like, Susan, do you care not play poker? You don't know anything, ha, 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 ha. And it was, yeah. And so the guy that was next to her, he said, what do you mean she doesn't know anything about poker? And Dawn was like, oh yeah, I just invited her to sit around and do all this. She completely confessed to the only reason why I was there. And he was like, so instead of actually being a friend, you just wanted her to be here. And she was like, well, it's no big deal. It's whatever. This is the Excalibur Fair female, by the way. And so, you know, another reason as to why. And many reasons as to why. Nonetheless, so he, he gives me a piece of paper, or two pieces of paper that are stapled together. And I read through the kinda-ish instructions and so I do the best I can. I get the cards and I look and I have a queen and an ace. I have a queen of hearts and an ace of diamonds or it was on the table one or the other. I might have had the spades, whatever it was. What well, I think it might have been the queen of spades that I had and the queen of hearts was on the table or something. Whichever way it was, it really doesn't matter because I also had the ace of diamonds and then there was the ace of spades. I might have, you know what, I might have had the queen of hearts and the ace of spades and then the other Something, it was as it was, it really doesn't matter. It's 2005. Point of the fact is, is that I have these two cards and I'm just like, oh my gosh! And so the guy next to me is like, no, 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 no. And he says, dead baby seals. And I get very angry because, excuse you, no. Especially in the year 2005. And so while some people may not have thought about the year 2005 for that particular reference, I knew what year it was, I knew what was going on, and so that particular male utilizing the words of that, I was very upset. <laughs> and so we were in an area where there was a kitchen nearby, and so those who know how I was raised, um, well, <laughs> then there's also where I was born and raised, and so <laughs> it was as it was. And so, you know, there's this table and chairs and tile floor, stone counter. I'm not saying that <laughs> I paid attention to the details. What I am saying is I was very upset by that guy's words. That was the year 2005 and being as I am, and born and raised in New Jersey, grew up going out to the East Coast, the Atlantic area, the ocean, and the Jersey Shore area, as well as New York State. And those who know anything about the Atlantic area, the ocean most specifically, above the Mason-Dixon line, the currents and the strength of the oceanic waters are far stronger than anything below the Mason-Dixon line at all. The waters below the Mason-Dixon line compared to above the Mason-Dixon line the strength to learn how to swim in those waters 
out along the jetties as well as out to the buoys takes a certain amount of internal strength and fortitude in certain references. So it's very, very upset. And so every time I got all happy fairy dance, because I got the queen and an ace, and there's a queen and an ace on the table. And I have no idea about any of these other cards. I just see that on the piece of paper. It says, I got to pay. That's I got to pay. <laughs> so I was all excited because I had two pair. I had a queen and an ace. There's a queen and an ace on the table. Yay! <laughs> And then he went and said it again, and I was very upset. And it was one of those, this is not the way that goes. So then the, go around the table, and you, you, they, they, you could switch in your cards. And I was like, no, I'll keep my cards. <laughs> I will keep my cards. They are my cards. And so the guy to, to the next area, he was the last to go. And he did whatever as far as he was concerned. This guy repeats it, because every time I looked at the card, no, stop saying that, because that's what he did every time, every time. And so I kept getting angrier and angrier because it was one of those you don't understand. I actually know what's going on, and so it's a smidgen upset. It's a personal issue. I don't deny it. Nonetheless, go around the table, and everybody, you know, puts their cards down, for those who know. And so I get, it gets to my part, and I'm like, I got it. He's all, well, you know, hold on, little lady. It's it's not just it's not over until the fat lady sings, and so on and so forth. And I'm like, anyway, so <laughs> this guy goes and says, you get um, you get four of a kind or something like that. And I'm like, I have a queen and an ace and I have two pair. And so I'm showing him the paper and I'm like, I have this and I win and this is why. And da, da, da. So we go back and forth. This guy is something like six foot five. He's got broad shoulders, maybe 275, 300 pounds. And I'm just like, I don't care. This is the way it's going to go because I win and sort of stuff. And he's like, yeah, well, you don't know anything. This is, it doesn't matter. This is the first time I play poker. <laughs> I win. So the guy at the other end of the table who had given me the pieces of paper, he goes, actually, Susan, you do win. Because I got two pair. That's right. I got two pair. I got two pair. And that's why I win. And he's like, no, you have a royal flush in spades. No, I got two pair. And that's why I win. And so we then go back and forth. And I'm like, but I still have two pair. <laughs> by technicality, so I was not giving up on the fact that I had to pay, because by, fine, whatever, I have a royal flush, okay, fine, whatever, fine, I have a royal flush in spades, awesome, cool, and yet I still have to pair. That doesn't change the fact that I still have to pair. That's how that goes. I could make the joke, there is Fort Dix in New Jersey. And so, <laughs> and by technicalities, that's just how that goes. And so, though I can also make the joke, you know, I have an internal because I got a pair, it's two of them, fallopian tubes. Okay? So, <laughs> by technicalities, I was born with two pairs. Boom! And so, <laughs> Monday, my biological father walks in my house because, you know, why did I move? Anyway, and so he comes out to the backyard and it's like, and it really, it not all, it just is as it is. Well, how did that little bunny stuff go? I don't know. There wasn't any little fluffy bunnies for me to play with. Although, I don't know, I guess maybe it depends on certain other factors as far as different uh, metaphors. And so... <laughs> I suppose I can possibly make a joke. Nonetheless, so he asks about how it went, and so I tell him the whole thing. I'm like, and I got two pair. And he's just like, you got what? Yeah, they said something about some royal flush or whatever. And he's like, you did what? 
I was like, I didn't do anything. The cards were dealt. I got what I got. I got two pair. I got two pair. <laughs> and he's just, you are not ever allowed to play poker again. Why? Why can't I play poker? And he was just like, because you're not ever going to get a better hand than a royal flush with spades. Excuse me. I got to pair. <laughs> Excuse me. That's what I got. I got to pair, fine, whatever. I got a royal flush, whatever, 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 as far as spades, whatever, whatever. I still got to pair. And so we went back and forth about that. And then he asked me, did you do your stupid happy fairy dance? Of course I did. And it's not stupid. Just so you know. Don't piss off the fairies by calling my happy fairy dance stupid. Just say, don't be pissing off the fairies because you call my happy fairy dance stupid. Because you'll piss them off by calling my happy fairy dance stupid. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Is as it is, and he knew about Excalibur Bear, by the way. So he took my biological mother's side on that one, and it's like, why would I ever get to, like that's not ever something that's considered acceptable at all. I don't care who you are, it doesn't matter. There's nothing acceptable about what happened at Excalibur Bear at all. That's literally survivor blaming, and that's not something you do, obviously. So, anyway. So I had seen this particular video link as well as the Google News report. And so Navy SEALs. Well, today's Memorial Day. And so I didn't really like what that guy had to say at all. Now, I had been invited to attend Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. And I had went through the process and everything, though, because of how the situations went in New Jersey, unfortunately, because of my biological mother and biological father and biological sister, I would have actually attended Marine and Science Technology School if certain things hadn't occurred. Now, then you fast forward in 1998 to where I was moved from New Jersey to Illinois, which is an irony because of the Great Lakes and the possibility as to certain types of guys in the vicinity of. And so I had earned 26 scuba diving certifications in the year 2009. And I took my scuba diving very seriously. There wasn't anything about my scuba diving that was recreational. There wasn't anything about my scuba diving that was lazy. I put all of my gear together myself. I had created my own regimen for my own type of scuba diving. I wasn't willing to go over certain things because when it came to certain attempts at discussions, the recreational viewpoint came up. I wasn't interested in recreation. Lazy topic points came up. I wasn't interested in being lazy. And so, well, yes, in technically the civilian aspects of, I just wasn't interested in those particular types of situations. And while the individuals that I had earned my 26 scuba diving certifications at those times in the year of 2009, I made attempts. So I explained that I was born and raised in New Jersey. I explained where I grew up going to the oceanic waters from the starting point as to Point Pleasant. Yes, I also went to other beaches, but the first beach that I had ever attended to go swimming was Point Pleasant in comparison to camp. I would know that, and my babysitter would know that, my babysitter's friend would know that, so would my babysitter's husband know that. In comparison to my biological mother, in comparison to my biological father, and definitely in comparison to my biological sister, they wouldn't know that. The only thing that they would know would be in reference to camp, and that's it, as far as my experience regarding the oceanic waters. They know that my babysitter was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, 
Last I checked, the Dominican Republic is an island. So that type of water is very different than a continental water. Obviously regarding the different types of storm situations as well. It's a fact. And so my babysitter's husband, having been a director of security in the World Trade Center and the World Trade Center Plaza, well, he was, he met my babysitter in the Dominican Republic. Now he had issues with some relative of his during the time frame or whatever. However, they had legally immigrated to the United States of America, mainly to escape his, I don't know if it was his brother or his cousin or something like that. I'm sure there are people who might know a little bit of history regarding that in comparison to me. This is before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. So they had been extremely appreciative that there's the constitutional rights and was capable to escape that because of those situations. Though swimming in the oceanic waters and or scuba diving, there is a difference in comparison, of course, to continental areas of shorelines regarding the oceanic waters and most specifically the Atlantic area of the ocean. Then there's the knowledge of my buck gung and my buck poo, most importantly my buck poo, as to her particular work being half Cantonese and half Mandarin in the lands of China, as far as that's concerned. So, as I explained, I got into scuba diving, which is something that Navy SEALs do. It's, I don't know how many people know this, some Navy SEALs, some of them. I don't want to assume, but there could be a Navy SEAL somewhere who learned how to scuba dive. I think it might be a requirement. <laughs> but see, here's the thing in regards of, there is humor. And so civilians or pogues, as far as military, if you don't have a certain background, you don't necessarily understand how important humor is. So while you might have your fluffy bunny feelings, that's your fluffy bunny feelings in comparison to what certain guys have endured, survived, and worked through in comparison. So where you have a lot of these, in my opinion, again, I didn't graduate basic training, I didn't attend MAST, however, I've dealt with a few things. And I grew up with my biological mother and my biological sister. So the amount of fluffy bunny, you know, put it in prettier words in comparison to just accepting it as it is, that's been a problem as to that cherubim type of view, in my opinion. Then you have the aspects of, yeah, okay, well, similar to my biological father, suck it up and, you know, keep going and push forward. Well, you still have to be capable to be sane. So, you know, if you only do certain things in comparison to having the capacity of actually being capable to, you know, joke around, not in any mean-spirited way, but being capable to actually laugh at situations, that's something that is important. And so the saying is, laughter is the best medicine. Well, duh, not rocket science at that point in time. And so while my sense of humor might not be for certain types of people, because maybe they don't have the experiences that can actually relate to that in certain levels, there are those who can. And that's kind of the point. And so when in reference to, okay, I didn't graduate basic training, I didn't attend mass, had a head injury during basic training, but see, this is important. So I knew a guy in the year 2000, 2001, 2003, 2004, I think, the, I think 2004 was the last time I saw this guy. I met him in 2000 or 2001. He worked at ISR. He had uh, been, if I remember correctly, he was Special Forces Army Airborne Ranger, if I remember correctly. And I had gotten employment at Chili's off of Dezavala and I-10 because of him. And 
there was a situation in reference to a bunch of people who had attended this thing called Temple of Flesh. I didn't know what it was at the time. I was only awake from my coma, not even a full year when I started working at Chili's. And the individuals knew that I was pregnant with my son. A majority of them were college students at UTSA. And there was a situation where it was extremely uncomfortable regarding a few of the males because they knew I was pregnant. And those who, those very few that I have ever dated, those very few can go into the difficulty levels of making an attempt to actually get me to pay attention in that capacity. And so if I could pick up on it, those individuals, those few would be capable to understand as to what level of creeptasticness that was. And so, you know, I was pregnant and I was keeping my son safe as well as myself safe and it was really weird. It's fine if that's what it was as it was, a personal thing. Anyway, so, you know, um, at one point in time, I walk into Chili's and the irony of irony, Lisa, who's Terry's wife at that time, is sitting on John, the manager of Chili's lap. I don't know if that's a lap bunny situation, though that is as it is. They weren't playing poker. There were cards on the table, but those were the drink cards in comparison. And I don't think that they were playing poker. <laughs> but they were, they were circles and squares. Anyway, <laughs> they see me. I see a female off in the distance against the area where the wall was. She's this brunette that has hair to here. She has um, not really thick bangs, but kind of ish. And she is just grrr, sort of. And it's so, huh, this seems interesting. <laughs> I'm going to go to the back and not deal with that. I don't want to deal with that at all. Uh, that seems like a, that seems like a you two situation with that female. I don't know who that female is. What I do know is she looks pissed at the two of you. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go my way. Well, it dawns on me, the stuff that they were talking about Temple of Flesh. I haven't attended a Temple of Flesh. I don't even remember this particular part until 2019, I suppose in some ways that has to do with the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, whether in reference to the fact that I still had the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain at the time, and or the after effects from that, because I have been told that I have memory deficits and I've been told that I have cognitive disorders and I've been told that I went from college algebra with trigonometry and calculus to second grade math. However, since I didn't remember that till 2019, maybe 2020, I suppose maybe that is memory deficits or cognitive disorders or both. I don't know. Nonetheless. So <laughs> I go back to the apartment at the time. And so I obviously was pregnant and the justice of the peace had occurred. So I had made attempts to, um, I dealt with a few things to, to get that discussion so that way Terry could know. Because I grew up with a lot of males. I hung out with a lot of males of various ages. And if certain things were going on that I noticed, and same thing with some of the females that I knew, but it was usually males that I would notice certain things and I'd give them a heads up. And that reference, I was like everybody's little sister where it was like, oh, well, you know. <laughs> There's that going on, and, and the, the guys usually that knew me at that time, one of these days when you grow up, you're going to make some guy the luckiest man in the world. Yeah, okay, sure. No, 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 with the way you are about, yeah, sure, whatever. Whatever, I don't really, you know, at that time. So anyway, I dealt with what I dealt with to inform Terry. And so three days went by. And I wasn't working for those three days. And so the day that I actually had the discussion, you know, 
my now dead ex-husband was speaking with Terry on the phone and they go back and forth. We were living in the same apartment complex, but there was a minimum that respect of, you know, not going over without permission and scheduling and stuff like that in comparison to my house. Just throwing this out there. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> just pointing that out there. So um, we go over to Terry's and she had cleared out everything. It was ridiculous. Terry was obviously upset. He had said that she left two days before we had been over there. And so she took, she, so it, he had milk crates to sit on and that was pretty much it. And it was just, wow, um, some females are trifling. I mean, I knew about some trifling hoes when I was growing up, but damn, that is a trifling hoe. And Terry being the way he was, he was just, what did you say? Don't mind me. And so I was, you know what, let's go. And, and so while my now dead ex-husband had absolutely no idea what to do, I said, you know what, um, what type of pizza do you like? And he was like, what? what, let's, let's get some food. Let's do this. You know, let's get in the car and, you know, basically being a mom, let's get in the car. We'll go pick up some pizza, you know, you guys or whatever you, you two do some stuff and I'll go to work and I'll deal with whatever. And when I get back, whatever. Well, I stopped at the store on the way back. I took my tips to go and get, you know, some stuff because he didn't even have towels. She took everything. I was like, wow, this, this trifling, trifling hoe, just a trifling hoe. There's nothing worthwhile to those types at all whatsoever. Those types, and especially the long term, ugh, then there's the longer term. Woo! And the longest term, nothing of value to any of those. They suffer so much worse because there is the saying you only live once to a degree to a degree because remember i began my medal of honor art project i complete historical and spiritual rubbings and so anyway so that future aspect nonetheless from now in 2022 so anyway <laughs> And so this particular situation, Terry and whatever they're doing as they do. Well, when I go to Chili's, I get called into the back office. What, I have no idea why. John goes and yells at me for telling Terry about him and Lisa. And I said, what? And he said, you know, you're not supposed to... He, he had told me, you're not supposed to tell your husband what happens at work. Excuse you? What would ever make you think that? This is just Chili's. This isn't, you know, the army. I, he had informed Terry and I that he was a Navy SEAL. And so I, this isn't some covert whatever. I don't know who you think you are. You don't know a damn thing. I'll do as I damn well please. And so it was as it was. And, it, and I explained, it happened that day. I don't know why and I don't know how it was known that that same day that I had specifically said something. So we go back and forth and he's like, you know, you can't say, it's like, he had said something about Lisa was impacted. Well, you know what? First and foremost, maybe if she wasn't a trifling hoe, she wouldn't have been impacted. Secondly, if she wasn't being a stupid slut, maybe she wouldn't have been impacted. Third, maybe if you were actually faithful to your wife, the mother of your children, you wouldn't have been impacted as well. So don't be pretending that you're something special when you're not. And so then it was a different issue as far as I was concerned. Well, I had reiterated that it was less than three to five hours from the time of being in work when I had told Terry. Literally, less than three to five hours. Didn't matter. This moron couldn't put one plus one together to get two at all. 
So I go and stop by, pick up some stuff after I get out of work. Go by Terry's, they are so drunk. <laughs> they started out with a 12 pack of beer and then they each had their own 36 cans of <laughs> and there were less than 12 cans left that were unopened between the two of them. <laughs> Which, oh, wow, okay, great, that's awesome. Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, later I get informed by Terry that John, not only was he not a Navy SEAL, he was a cook in the Navy in comparison to a Navy SEAL. Well, it's now called Military City USA in comparison to San Antonio in comparison to the different bases. It's Joint Base San Antonio, and it's Military City USA. And so in the city limits, within that 1604 and 410 area of loop, particularly along I-10, that's what occurred, near the UTSA campus, the FBI station nearby. Well, one of them. And so <laughs> that, that was as it was. Not the only time I've ever dealt with that problem. As I've discussed, as I've written about, as I've put forward as far as lectures or monologues or sermons, however you want to put it, regarding my official YouTube video channel. So make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel. Make sure to like my official YouTube videos, and if you're gonna leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. Additionally, go to my website, www.susanneling.com. There's different pages that you can go and look at, which includes my books, my artwork, my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, and go look through all of that and those particular references. And the book section has the links to purchase my books through Amazon. So. Thank you in advance for purchasing. So that, in that particular reference as to those situations, were as they were. I was enraged as far as anybody being stupid enough to ever steal valor. One of the things that Terry had been surprised about, and this is before 9-11 or the 11th of September 2001, this is maybe April or May of 2001, possibly around, I think that's about the time. And so I was livid, enraged, and pissed off because I couldn't understand that. And while at this particular evening, Terry was very, very drunk, <laughs> he was surprised because I was just barely 18 years old, pregnant, and that particular factor, and it was, well, I, I, I don't say certain things because I didn't graduate basic training. And so, you know, there are those, whatever their possibility as to pop culture references as to those factors. Well then, fast forward to my scuba diving. And there's quite a few situations, obviously, in between. And that does go to the rack and all that sort of stuff because during that discussion, my now dead ex-husband didn't understand why I was so enraged to anybody stealing valor. He tried to defend stolen valor and I had no belief that it was ever worthwhile to ever do that. You couldn't convince me and I already dealt with what I dealt with at that point in time. And since then, and so you couldn't convince me to this day, 22 years later, couldn't convince me to ever, there's nothing that can convince me of that. Because earned valor is earned valor. It's just the reality. Individuals who don't have the need or don't have the want or don't have the desire or don't have the preference to discuss their work, that's one thing. However, it doesn't change the fact that there is a difference between earned valor and the actualities of in comparison. 
and so and the, the situations that can occur because of that as well and so I understand there are certain factors though with the technological situations I have a different viewpoint when it comes to that so it's a different measure which can be considered as in some ways to a degree protection ish regarding certain types of guys uh, however at the same time I, I, I can I can see the multiple sides as far as that's concerned however the reality is earned valor is earned valor that's the facts so in 2009 I got involved with scuba diving specifically because of several many reasons there were so many reasons but I, I limited the number of reasons that I would discuss because of my childhood because of my teenage years because of what I already dealt with and was dealing with because those who know as far as my ex-in-laws as well as my biological mother biological father biological sister and those factors I was not willing to go through certain things over again despite I was going through it to a degree and so when it came to my scuba diving that was a <laughs> I wasn't gonna talk about it unless I had a reason to it didn't matter if I didn't get certain signals as far as where it would be considered I didn't have a reason to at all because of my childhood reference to Old Tenant Presbyterian Church and reference to Asher Holmes Elementary School the different attempts that I made it was just I'll just explain that and it's all the truth because of the after effects of my head injury I've been prescribed all these different things I read a Jewish medical journal it was followed up by reading a British UK medical journal as well as a few others in regards of how the scuba diving is to the the pressure had done something to assist with alleviating headaches because of the consistency when descending in the water in comparison and so that seemed interesting I had sent an email regarding that though it went the way it did and um, as far as my headaches and migraines I had made attempts with the prescriptions that didn't seem to do anything the side effects I learned of later well I mean why would an anti-headache medication that has a side effect of possibly calling causing headaches and or migraines ever be used for an anti-headache medication why would a migraine medication or an anti-migraine medication have side effects of possibly causing headaches and or migraines ever be utilized for that that makes absolutely no sense i suppose there's a difference in regards of the war on drugs as to if you look at certain prescription drugs as to the side effects in the comparison of and when you take those particular factors especially when it comes to those who do navy seal type of scuba diving well that impacts their systems far differently than people who don't so people who don't scuba dive especially to the depth levels that navy seals and mrs or marsoc guys and if you don't go to those levels you on land you don't know anything that's just the facts. If you think that you know everything when it comes to that, the facts are the facts that you don't because you don't have the personal experience. And that's the facts. I wouldn't doubt if there were different types of guys with military and law enforcement background that have descended into depth levels that civilians wouldn't be allowed to know unless they were actually informed but here's the thing the amount of civilians that have done the same sorts of garbage regarding my biological mother biological father biological sister and ex-in-laws when those types of people well i read this and i read that and i saw this movie and i saw that in comparison to the fact that you know a military guy is going to have a clearance level that you don't have because similarly in reference to going and getting a carton of cigarettes at Walmart in the Carrollton, Texas area, a background check for a military ID is going to be a lot more in depth and in detail than a damn driver's license for the state period and end of story. 
And so when it comes to those types of civilians that, oh, well, what do you know just because you did this? And that has to be an annoyance to guys such as Navy SEALs, such as the MARSOC guys and the dot, dot, dot types of whatever sorts of special forces in those references. Because realistically, okay, I didn't graduate basic training. I acknowledge that. I haven't hidden that at all. But that's the point, is I acknowledged I did not graduate basic training. I acknowledge, so acknowledging that fact and the knowledge as to the after effects of my head injury, that sort of situation to guys who they can prove certain other things, but they can't at the exact same time. When you have civilians, as far as that's concerned regarding the problems and the reasons why you end stolen valor, that's a fact. And so in regards of what Navy SEALs want to be remembered, and yes, I'm sure they have, depending on which Navy SEAL, depends on what they want remembered. Depends on which guy or guys that they were with that they want remembered. Depends on certain situations that those guys want remembered. What is the reasons? Well, it's similar to if you go into any church and you ask 20 people, what is your viewpoint as to what you define Christianity as? Get 20 different answers. They have certain similarities, but they still have certain differing aspects. Same with Navy SEALs. It depends on what mission you're on. It depends on which group of guys you're with. It depends on where you're stationed. It depends on your training. It depends on the time of your training. It depends on so many different factors that that's important to take in consideration. So in the time frame of 2009, in the month of January officially, I had explained the reasons why, the, the, the civilian allowed to know reasons why, I should clarify. So, so the after effects of my head injury, dealing with the pain levels. Acknowledging that I was born and raised in New Jersey though, acknowledging that I would go out to the New Jersey shore and the New York state shorelines and swimming out past what, what areas have jetties, or had, I guess it depends because of the oceanic water levels, and out to the buoys and those factors because depending on which area, depends on what type of buoys they had. So some areas had circular orange buoys that would look similar to the balls that are in the, the so if you go swimming at the YMCA and you have the Olympic lines and every now and then you have, you, for the most part, you have the circular ones and then you have kind of a ball shape. Well, it's a bigger version and it's orange. And then there's other types that kind of, it, it has a bucket and it's orange and it has almost like a construction cone sort of thing. And either way, well, I'd have fun. <laughs> A lot of times, one of my favorite things to do when I was a child would get on the ropes and then I'd hug the ball and because it would spin. <laughs> and then additionally, because of the current, it was just a lot of fun, so I'd just hold on the ball. <laughs> and it was just fun because I was that child. And so... <laughs> And then, you know, the ones that had the, the bucket sort of thing, I would climb onto and then get my feet. Now, certain orange balls I actually could stand on top of because they didn't turn as much. And so I could stand on top of them and then go dive in the water and stuff like that. Though it was as it was because of the type of arrangement that was in the area. And I explained this to the civilian area. <clears throat> And so these individuals did not respond in any capacity from the time frame of January, officially when I first started attending different areas, all the way through to even the following year in January of 2010, even in reference to 
February or March or April of 2010. And so even with military guys that were in the civilian sector, nobody had responded in a way that I would ever have the capacity to discuss those factors. I brought up Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment and nobody actually discussed with me in the capacities that I would have that knowledge that there would be that understanding. I'm just, <laughs> I made attempts over and over again. And those who knew me in what is supposed to be considered the adult consenting lifestyle, who complained about me bringing up certain things such as the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, and how they had said, well, you sound like a broken record, to the point I actually remembered that they said that, they can take in consideration how many times I made attempts per day, per scuba trip, per class, to where the individuals in those areas were just, ugh, you're gonna go bring that up again in comparison to, all right, well, never mind, because apparently, what do I know? You know, because I don't know who to actually speak with in these references. So because I don't have that chain of command in that same capacity, it's kind of the gray area to a degree, well, all right. Well, I have multiple examples, and if you go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, in the book section, there's the three-volume book series, The Adventures of Susan B. Ling, Scuba Diver Extraordinaire. And so in those particular references, there's even discussions regarding another scuba diver who was a scuba dive instructor, and he was going to go to the Oriskany. And this is a prime example that Navy SEALs would definitely be capable to understand. So this guy and I are talking and I let him know, I'm gonna go to the Vandenberg and he's like, I'm gonna go to the Oriskany. Well, and we start talking about the military aspects as to what the boats were used for in comparison, so on and so forth. And then, you know, I let him know, well, I'm gonna land at the bottom of the ocean because I got stuff to take care of. And so, <laughs> His response was, well, uh, the, 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 the tower, the top of the tower is 115 feet to the Oriskany. <laughs> you believe that it's 115 feet? To the top, from the top of the water to the top of the tower in the Oriskany? have ever heard civilians that do the recreational or lazy scuba diving and we're like, oh, you think why? <laughs> like internally just, oh. <laughs> so, so 115 feet. So, you know, for those who know anything about submarines and the sizes ish, uh, because they're usually in the water. And so, <laughs> you know, usually I'm going to guesstimate Navy SEALs when they go and enter from underneath. Usually that translates to the submarine being in the water. It could be a possibility. Hypothetically, it could happen that the submarine in comparison to a boat. <laughs> Maybe this is why I find killer whales so cute because, you know, I mean, you know, when the water is going by a submarine, it probably looks like a little killer whale. <laughs> I could make that joke, I don't know, I'm just saying. <laughs> 
because usually they're probably the color black and then the foaming on the thigh. Is the color black. <laughs> Depending on the speed, of course. It depends on what speed they're going. I would guesstimate. I wouldn't know officially. And so, in those references, you know, they probably, the scuba divers, as far as the Navy SEALs, they probably don't go to board the, the submarine when it's moving. <laughs> that probably wouldn't be helpful. I would guesstimate it would probably be kind of difficult. I'm not going to assume, though. I don't have that personal experience the way Navy SEALs would. And so most likely the submarine would kind of hover and then they go in. I, I'm fairly certain there's a side hatch for certain ones and then a possibility of the undercarriage area. Nonetheless, usually a submarine in the water is gonna be deeper than 130 feet. For the top of the top of the submarine, <laughs> whatever area, I think it's called a hull. So, you know, in that area where they know to go inside of a submarine, that probably <laughs> being underneath the water, even if it's only 20 feet underneath the water, is probably deeper than 130 feet down to the side hatch of the door in comparison to the underbelly. I'm not certain. I have not taken a tape measure and been like, okay, you submarine drivers, you stop right there. I'm gonna take this piece of tape and I'm gonna drop down and <laughs> and measure. That's not how that's gonna go. <laughs> I guess I suppose I can make a joke. And so, and technically I did. And so, <laughs> you know, it's not gonna be like, well, you know, that right there, that's, um, that's 2,570 point, one feet. <laughs> and that is 752,629.32 feet. That's, that's not how that goes. <laughs> so... <laughs> miles whatever it is and so in those references because the facts and so <laughs> that's kind of the situation so if in regards of where I had been regarding my 26 scuba diving certifications well most likely hypothetically if any Navy SEALs went to go speak with my biological mother and or biological father and or biological sister well, they'd have a certain baseline of what they've already dealt with, depending if they were active duty National Guard reservist or veteran. Same thing in reference to my ex-in-laws, because active duty National Guard and reservists wouldn't have the same capacities of certain situations the way veterans have, I would guesstimate. And while some have come from certain types of if you want to call it family structure, or you can just say biological aspects, there are those capacities regarding those situations as to those knowledge situations. And so in regards of Memorial Day and going back to that poker situation, well, that's kind of a big reality in reference to certain factors that some don't take in consideration. So while some people view however they view, the reality is when you take in consideration what I had discussed as well as wrote about in reference to the year of 1993 and what, what can I do, spirit of General George Washington, you know, at that point in time, I'm just, I'm just, you know, in fifth grade, you know, I had this nightmare before, how do I, fix and repair what I can and all that stuff in that particular monument nearby and seeing the situations and the, you know, this is dedicated to the 
past soldiers, the current soldiers, and the future soldiers, and tracing that out with my fingertip. And so it's something to take in consideration because there is the knowledge for certain guys that, yeah, you wouldn't have what you have, not just in reference to the Constitution of the United States of America, not just in reference to the homeland, not just in reference to how situations have progressed in a lot of ways towards advancements over the centuries. Though that factor for, as I would guesstimate, especially regarding Navy SEALs, because of the guys who came before as to that current time frame, even now and then to the future. Those situations of those guys, you know, there's the tomb of the unknown soldier, which I wouldn't be surprised if certain guys would have certain affinity, even though in certain ways it would be a little bit symbolic for those guys, because who else would know certain guys in reference to especially stuff like Navy SEALs or dot, dot, dot types. Because certain guys, depending on the work that they've done, depending on where they went to handle situations. So while I would guesstimate maybe not the same regarding the news article that I had just seen the title of, that might be something that Navy SEALs, as well as others, could have that particular viewpoint of what they would want you to know on this particular Memorial Day to remember. And so, and not the only ones, because there are certain law enforcement guys that have similar types of backgrounds, especially when you get to a federal level. Um, and those situations. And so where those factors as to those who came before the, those who came before and paved the way. So in one year in the 1990s, I think it was 1997, went with the youth group and I had heard this particular noise. It was very different than what I had heard. And the and we were on whichever area in New Jersey youth group was as they were. And I had asked who was, um, I think he was driving and he was kind of more focused in the other capacities in comparison, maybe to my question. And I had asked, what is that noise? I think it was Mr. I think it was Mr. Ed was his name or something like that. Or Mr. Nor, Nor something another. I can't, I can't remember how the last name was pronounced, but it was N-O-R something another. And, um, you know, what, what is that noise that I hear the, the ch -ch 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 -ch? and he, his response without hesitation was, oh, that's just the bones of the people that laid the foundation of this country that you hear. Oh. Now, while the youth group, other teenagers laughed, at that point that I had taken very seriously in reference to this Memorial Day, how apropos and how truthful, especially since New Jersey and New York and Pennsylvania, as well as of course the Virginia, Washington DC area had been impacted the most directly in regards of 11 September, 2001 also in 1993 because what some people don't understand about the World Trade Center and the World Trade Center Plaza it wasn't just Wall Street there were a lot of businesses and connections yes there were also embassies that were in those areas it's literally called the World Trade Center the World Trade Center Plaza and so while the general public that wouldn't know the area specifically, they literally would have it in the name that they could listen to, read, see, whatever, as far as that's concerned. 
And so I dealt with a bunch of situations in the state of Texas and even in some ways more recently, that was no different than what I dealt with in Texas. So similarly to how there's a difference to this official YouTube video of mine, as to the difference of the lecture or sermon or monologue in comparison to an actual in-person, face-to-face, in-person discussion. Because this is a lecture. There is that fact that people have needed to actually accept that there is that difference. It is not the same whatsoever. No matter how realistic, no matter how much high definition, it does not change. It won't ever be the same as in-person, face-to-face, in-person whatsoever. And so while some people might think whatever capacities of instead, well, that's the point. You need to be capable to distinguish. So similarly as to my scuba diving, that work I did in person, face to face, if you want to call it that, in person. It's different than other viewpoints of. So there's a situation I remember seeing pictures about as far as that Nicki Minaj wax um, figure, as far as that's concerned. Well, did you get her permission to do that? Did you actually ask her permission to do so? If you didn't, then what would that be considered as other than intellectual property, whatever issues, so on and so forth. So while some people might think otherwise that it might be considered as a tribute, well, are you sure? And what is your version of the word tribute? Because if you don't get that permission, which would be considered important, those particular factors as to actual respect to the individual to their work is actually that. So while some people might have their opinion otherwise as what they think as, well then think about what your opinion is otherwise in comparison to the individual themselves. So while some people might wish to claim, and I'm sure some might have said, well, their version of stolen valor was whatever wishful aspect as to respect. No, it's not. It's not respect, it's disrespectful. Period and end of story. No matter what you wish, no matter how you try to sugarcoat it, it's not. That's why individuals who have actually earned valor don't have patience for individuals who don't. That's why it's not viewed the same way to some people. And so when it comes to my work, as to my stuff, there is only a very select way as to actual showing regarding respect to my work, appreciation to my work. It's not most likely what you'll think, but that's a similarity regarding military. It requires you to actually ask in comparison to assuming you can go to anybody else instead. And that's the reality, because if people in whichever capacity of, similar to what I had seen when I was in the state of Texas in 2020, these people went up to a football player's mom. She's not the football player. Yeah, sure, she delivered the guy. Yeah, she did whatever as far as raising him. That doesn't translate to the work though, that that football player did at all. Sure, could have taken to the different areas and stuff like that, but the work itself, what actually is done, the actual capacities of, very different in every situation. And that's something else that's been needed to be understood. So there's kind of that similar aspect as to technology. 
you know that that's not the exact same. So you know that individual is not the exact same as the individual itself. Similarly, to through this particular official YouTube video of mine. Again, subscribe to my official YouTube channel and like my official YouTube videos. If you're gonna leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect, as well as go to my website, www.susanbeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydoorbell.com. Similarly, you know that this is a video. You have that understanding, knowledge, and comprehension of. In that reference, you know that that's mom and not the football player itself. How difficult is that for certain individuals to actually understand from that knowledge? So while I've heard about these situations regarding pop culture, as to those particular factors, the equivalent of those buckle bunny types. And yet the irony is the buckle bunnies actually go directly to in comparison to the other factors of, which is an irony of ironies. That a buckle bunny has more intelligence to go directly to the individual than other factors when you take in consideration as to that pop culture reference, in my opinion. It's a fact. So, in regards of Navy SEALs and those dot, dot, dot types, as to their earned aspects. Well, that's why you end all types of stolen valor. If you, some people might want to say that it's an interpretation or it's artistic. No, if you didn't get permission. Sure, some people might like that. There might be some people who like that. Depends on who it is though. So while some people might, in comparison to others, depends on who it is. And so depending on who it is, depends on what their particular preferences are in comparison to what others might assume. And then there's how you spell assume. And so, I have my particular opinion regarding quite a few factors, quite a few situations as far as that's concerned. And similarly to that Navy SEAL situation as to earned valor compared to that Chili's problem as far as the cook in comparison to a SEAL, there are those situations to actually take in consideration of. Because while there is, as Denzel Washington had said in his um, speech regarding that, you only live once. Yes, to a degree. And yet, if you're going to have that knowledge in this particular reference of what is actually of importance? Because now that there is the knowledge that there is the long-term effect and long-term impact because technology is permanent, is that what you're willing to be known as? Because remember, in regards of such as computer games or video games or what have you, with the way the different situations because of Uvalde, Texas, among other factors, as to how close that is to San Antonio, a military city USA, and how it has been brought up in the news that they went into those social media account aspects. Think about that when it comes to the long term. So if you have children or the possibility of grandchildren or grandchildren, think about that as to what you are willing to show regarding that. And then think to yourself as to what those impacts could actually be, depending on your patterns of behavior. I know that this is a minor aspect to my official YouTube channel official videos to this particular sermon or monologue or lecture to the news reports. However, that's something to take in consideration as to those factors. And so I don't know um, 
how some might think about that, though that is something to take in consideration. So as far as what the Navy SEALs and other situations might have to consider as to what would be remembered regarding Memorial Day, well, is it for the best in genuine truth? Does it actually progress in the correct positive ways forward? Because in comparison to scuba diving decades ago, compared to 2009 or even this year in 2022, there is a lot of difference as to the capabilities of especially with the utilization of technology. Then you have the capacities of the work that I had accomplished. Well, sure, I earned 26 scuba diving certifications. None of those scuba diver instructors taught me anything as far as my work at all. I explained that in person, face-to-face -face in person, as well as in writing, that I learned my gear they didn't teach me what I was doing at all. They didn't teach me my work. They assisted me regarding those certifications. They have, that is a reality to take in consideration. It's not the same as a Navy SEAL instructor, obviously, because there is that difference to take in consideration. So while some have viewed the civilian aspects of scuba diving compared to the recreational civilian aspects of scuba diving, compared to the lazy civilian aspects of scuba diving in comparison to the lazy recreational civilian scuba diving, in comparison to military scuba diving, in comparison to law enforcement scuba diving, in comparison to fire department scuba diving, in comparison to EMS scuba diving, in comparison to my type of scuba diving. So that is something to take in a larger consideration of, especially when it comes to this Memorial Day, because those civilian scuba divers, well, they wouldn't have had it if it wasn't for certain military guys to begin with. And so that level of their choices, such as in the year of 2009, such as in the year 2019, such as in the year 2020, hypothetically, such as even in the year 2021, well, there are those factors to keep in mind, especially to who actually did the work. So, oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight are the red.
for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel, like my official YouTube videos, and if you're going to leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. Additionally, go to my website, www.susanmealing.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. Look through my journal blog, The Ornery PSA. Go to my book section and click on the links to purchase my books through Amazon. Thank you in advance. And look at the various artwork that I've done. Now, as to the scuba diving aspects in reference to my particular scuba diving in regards to the depth levels that I went to, as I said earlier in the beginning of my official YouTube video, these are two different corsets. One is a long corset, one is a short corset. You know, eight millimeter scuba or eight millimeter spiral steel boning for one area and 12 millimeter uh, spiral steel boning regarding the other. So this one is I believe it's eight millimeter, maybe it's somewhere around there, but there's the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. So this is 20 millimeter flat boning. This would be the equivalent of, I think it's 18 maybe, 20, 18-ish millimeter spiral steel boning for one, two, three, four, five, five, in regards to just the short one in comparison to the long one. And so then 20, 20, and 20, 20 in regards to, so <laughs> kind of have to have that aspect. And since there's the length of my official YouTube videos, you can take that in consideration as to all of the prior ones where I've wear one of these in comparison to two. As to my only really bikini aspects to my wetsuit regarding my Farmer John wetsuit and the work thereof as to the difference between my scuba diving and civilian style of scuba diving. Then in conjunction to that, you have the time frame of the Bethlehem Star, December 2020, where I went out to Kitty Hawk regarding that area in 2021, 2022, regarding other more northern areas of the Atlantic area of the ocean to the point of February 2022 in New Jersey and Hithers, I think it is Hithers Beach. And so not only the depth levels as to the pressure, but also the cold and the strength of the currents. So you guys, have a good day and enjoy Memorial Day, the 30th of May, 2022. Make sure to be respectful and appreciative of those who were in the armed forces of the United States of America before and who are and who will be.